Hello and welcome. My name is Phil Melton. I'm the Vice President of Product Marketing at MercuryGate International. And I have the pleasure once again to welcome Kevin Zwire from China Channelytics with me today as we discuss carrier management in the flatbed market. So Kevin, once again, please tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started. Sure, thanks, Phil. Happy uh, to be back here again. Uh, my name is Kevin Zwire. I run our transportation practice at Chainalytics. Uh, we're a niche consulting company based in Atlanta, but we do a lot of work around transportation, uh, sourcing, transportation modeling, and transportation management systems. And I have about 25 years of experience across the uh, consulting and software side of the business. So happy, uh, happy to have the conversation. Yeah, I'm really happy to have you back with us again today. So with regards to carrier management, let's discuss briefly the large contract carrier marketplace. What kind of information can you gather regarding that marketplace or market? Well, I think one of the pieces we have to always talk about um, when we're talking about tr the, the truckload market, it's quite different than other transportation markets like LTL, uh, rail, or parcel. Um, it is an incredibly fragmented market. No, I don't, no one even knows how many trucking companies there are out there. There's hundreds of thousands of them. Um, and even if you look at the top 100 carriers, they're probably, from a revenue standpoint, only about 30 billion of a 350 plus billion marketplace. So the biggest piece to understand is that there's no carrier, supplier, vendor, whatever you want to call it, who can dictate pricing in that kind of market. It's it's almost perfect competition from an economic standpoint. And then similarly, there's no shipper who can dictate pricing in that market either. Um, whether it's you know a large retailer who has a billion of transportation spend, they're still a small portion of uh, you know of the market. So it's very much supply and demand driven. Um, and so when we you know we see pr demand go up significantly, that pulls in supply, um, or I mean, we see demand go up and pricing goes up, and that pulls in supply. And then eventually we'll overshoot, um, which happens with great frequency. And then we'll see pricing come back down. And we have these cycles within truckload transportation, uh, you know, pretty commonly every, you know, every few years. And right now we're certainly in one of those cycles where there's uh, pricing has gone up and we need some more supply. And we're probably going to get some more supply coming into that market. Yeah, I, I can tell a little story about, uh, I've got a brother who uh, at one point in his career had his own little trucking business. He had two or three trucks and he ran full truckload from the West Coast back to the Wisconsin area with with fruits and those apples, those types of things from the state of Washington, California, so on and so forth. And then he'd turn around and haul paper products back. And you yep. know, when I stop and think about the marketplace itself, and I think about the small truckload carriers um, there's just a lot of them, right? There's a lot of people out there, a lot of owner operators that are doing things. So one of the things I'd like to ask, and, and maybe you can help me on this one, can you really drill down into the industry and really kind of say, hey, what makes up the flatbed industry? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the, the flatbed industry is even more on that continuum of owner operators and small trucking firms, you know, like you were just talking about. Um, so there, there's not a lot of, you know, large, huge flatbed trucking companies who have a couple thousand trucks running around uh, with flatbed trailers into it. So it's even more disparate than what you would find in the dry van world. And so tapping into that capacity is thus even more difficult due to that, you know, frankly, long tail of, of, uh, of trucking companies out there. And, and it's, you know, it's hard to find them. It's hard to manage them. You know, due to that that marketplace, kind of the makeup of it, right? The industry. Um, you know, I, I I look back at sales years ago in sales and and those types of things, and I think about my Rolodex, right? You have a Rolodex of stuff. So, what must shippers do? Is it very similar to that? I mean, in the in the marketplace we have today, you know, what what can shippers do to make sure that they have uh, the right number, if you will, of of carriers on their uh, in their Rolodex, if you will. 
Yeah, it's the, the the proverbial Rolodex can't be too small. Um, is you know is probably the first bit of uh, of advice or information. I mean, most shippers, especially within flatbed, um, have to maintain a, a significant number of carrier relationships to ensure that they have the adequate capacity to deliver their products. Um, they also will will typically need a different you know different types of carriers, different mix of you know, regional versus national providers, short haul versus long haul, uh, asset based providers who who actually own the equipment versus uh, brokers who can even tap into uh, a larger portion of that long tail of, of supply. Um, all of them need to be a part of the of the puzzle that a shipper needs to put together uh, when they're you know, trying to build their provider base. And they, they are there any to, other complicating factors within that the the marketplace, the flatbed market, um, that that really makes you know the life for a shipper a little bit harder? Yeah, for, I mean for sure. I mean flatbed versus is dry, dry van. I mean you know dry van trailers are you know a dime a dozen, and they're all pretty much the same. Right? <laughs> so um, you know that it's it's a very standardized equipment. Whereas on the the, the flatbed side. Uh, the equipment isn't quite as standardized and flatbed shippers are moving, you know, a lot of times big, bulky, oddly shaped stuff that, you know, can't can't go into a box, can't be thrown in the back of, a, you know, of a conventional trailer um, and requires, you know, also in, in many instances, more effort on the part of the driver um, to secure it. Um, Get it properly loaded, and then you know, in many instances, tarp it, cover you know, cover that product so that the product is safe in transit. So there, there's definitely those you know, the, those complicating factors uh, that the shipper has to deal with, as well as the drivers and, and trucking companies themselves have to deal with. Well, and I would I would assume then you know if you think about the marketplace for flatbed carriers, and then you say, okay, now I need a flatbed carrier with specialized equipment, right? Mm -hmm. You just you you are living in a more complex world of making sure that you have to have a lot of um, different carriers that support your business. So you know one of the things you know did, how, how many have you ever looked at how you split out uh, those those that have specialized equipment maybe and those that don't. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of different types of flatbed trailers, um, or you know, flatbed types of equipment that that exist. I mean, uh, and I won't even pretend to you know to to know or or name them all, but I mean, you you know, you have step decks and different you know single drop versus double drop. Um, you have some very interesting names, stuff like low boys and you know covered wagons and conestoga and those you know those ones that have like at least a little bit of a side um you know on uh you know on the side of them you have and i'm sure you've passed them uh, on the road ones that are um extendable or can stretch to longer lengths than uh you know than, than normal as well so um you know, depending upon you know what needs to what needs to be moved, there can be lots of, of very specialized uh, you know equipment for you know if you're you're hauling boats or you're hauling windmill blades um, and you know those those specialized prod products will often need even more specialized trailers than you know th than some of the ones that I've already mentioned. So if if I was a a flatbed shipper, you know, what must I be able to do to understand with regards to all the varying different types of trailer equipment needed for each delivery? Yeah, I mean, you you first you have to understand the requirements of the load um, to know what is the right you know right equipment to even try and and get. Then you have to understand well what's that equipment availability on what I need with the provider base that's out there. Um, either what I'm using or what I have access to, maybe through a through a broker. Um, you start also getting into, you know, permits and road restrictions of, you know, what where where can that equipment go, right? Um, you know, we always we always see the uh, you know the signs coming up to overpasses and bridges um, on what that clearance is and. You know, most you know most dry van carriers those you know those bridges and overpasses are built to let them you know let them through. But you get into you know oddly shaped stuff in the flatbed world, and uh, 
you know, you, you have to be looking at what that, what is that actual route going to be? Um, because it, you might not be able to go the way that, uh, you may think you would go or the way that is the, you know, quote, shortest, shortest distance and, and most efficient. You have to understand the road restrictions. And so, um, you know, being able to to match up and, and, and marry those those needs and availability pretty quickly. Um, you know, that's 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 certainly one of the reasons that a lot of, you know, a lot of shippers, especially flatbed shippers, you know, look to a, a TMS to kind of manage, follow and execute on on all those different rules and requirements uh, that they you know need, need to obey. You know, it's interesting you bring up the, the routes and those types of things. I had the privilege uh, a number of years ago to be in Seattle, Washington. Uh, and we were driving through Seattle going north um, out of the city, but down in down in the city, there's a lot of overpasses. And we went by a, a guy who was hauling a big piece of equipment and he was jammed and stuck underneath uh, one of the overpasses. And it was like, of course, you know, we got to see a good look at it because the traffic was backed up for miles. But yep. it was, uh, you know, and back then, you know, I didn't even think about it, but you're right. I mean, in today's world, if you don't have a TMS, you don't have those types of tools that will really help you drive one the route to the carrier making sure that they're qualified and they've got all the insurances and all the things that you need to ensure that they have that uh, ability to haul your freight and haul it safely and, and get it to where you need it completely um you know then you're, you're going to be in trouble if you don't have something like that so again maybe that's another reason why um you know people are out in the marketplace looking for a tms similar to the one that Mercurygate has where we, you can manage all those things and you're tied into systems or you can validate the insurances, you can validate the driver's log, you can you can do all those things that you need to do to make sure that your product is shipped, shipped safe, safely, and it gets to its destination when uh, you said it would get there. So, you know, again, I wanna thank you, uh, Kevin, for joining us today and also for those that are listening. So please look forward to our next conversation when Kevin and I will do a deeper dive into flatbed fleet modeling.